The Lives of the Saints by the Reverend Alban Butler, taken from the fourth edition, published in 1954. November 3rd, St. Venefriede or Winnefriede, Virgin Mother. Her father, whose name was Thevif, was very rich and one of the prime nobility in the country. Being son to Eloith, the chief magistrate and second man in the kingdom of North Wales next to the king. Her virtuous parents decided above all things to breed her up in the fear of God and to preserve her soul untainted amidst the corrupt air of the world. About that time, Saint Bueno, Beno or Benau, a holy priest and monk, who is said to have been uncle to our saint by the mother, having founded certain religious houses in other places, came and settled in that neighborhood. Thevith rejoiced at his arrival, gave him a spot of ground free from all burden or tribute to build a church on, and recommended his daughter to be instructed by him in Christian piety. When the holy priest preached to the people, Benefrida was placed at his feet, and her tender soul eagerly imbibed his heavenly doctrine, and was wonderfully affected with the great truths which he delivered, or rather which God addressed to her by his mouth. The love of the sovereign and infinite good growing daily in her heart, her affections were quite weaned from all the things of this world, and it was her earnest desire to consecrate her virginity by vow to God, and, instead of an earthly bridegroom, to choose Jesus Christ for her spouse. Her parents readily gave their consent, shedding tears of joy and thanking God for her holy resolution. She first made a private vow of virginity in the hands of Saint Bueno and some time after received the religious veil from him with certain other pious virgins in whose company she served God in a small nunnery with her father, which her father had built for her under the direction of Saint Bueno near Holywell. After the death of Saint Bueno, Saint Benefrida left Holywell, and after putting herself for a short time under the direction of Saint Diver, entered the nunnery of Gutherin and Dangbushera, under the direction of a very holy abbot called Elarius, who governed there a double monastery. After the death of the abbess Theonia, St. Venefrida was chosen to succeed her. In all monuments and calendars she is styled a mother. All the accounts we have of her agree that Caradoc, or Cradoc, son of Elaine, prince of that country, being violently fallen in love with her, gave so far away to his brutish passion that, finding it impossible to exhort her, consent to marry him, or gratify his desires, in his rage he one day pursued her and cut off her head as she was flying from him to take refuge in the church which St. Bueno had built at Holywell. Robert of Shrewsbury and some others add that Craddock was swallowed up by the earth upon the spot. Secondly, that in the place where the head fell, the wonderful well, which is seen there, sprang up, with pebble stones and a large parts of the rock in the bottom stained with red streaks and with moss growing on the sides under the water, which renders a sweet, fragrant smell. And thirdly, that the mother was raised to life by the prayers of Saint Bueno and bore ever after the mark of her martyrdom by a red circle on her skin about her neck. If these authors, who lived a long time after these transactions, were by some of their guides led into any mistakes in any of these circumstances, neither the sanctity of the mother nor the devotion of the place can be hereby made liable to censure. St. Venefrida died on the 22nd of June, as the old panegyric preached on her festival, and several of her lives testify. The most ancient life of this saint, in the Cotonian manuscript, places her death, or rather her burial, at Guthurin on the 24th of June. The words are... The place where she lived with the holy virgins was called Guthurin, where sleeping, on the 8th before the calends of July, she was buried and rests in the Lord. Her festival was removed to the 3rd of November, probably on account of some translation, and in 1391, Thomas Arundel, Archbishop of Canterbury, with his clergy and convocation assembled, ordered her festival to be kept on that day throughout his province with an office of nine lessons which is inserted in the Sarum Previary. The time when the saint lived is not mentioned in any of her lives. Most, with Alfred and Cressy, think it was about the close of the 7th century. 
Her relics were translated from Guthurn to Shrewsbury in the year 1138 and deposited with great honor in the church of the Benedictine Abbey, which had been founded there without the walls in 1083 by Roger, Earl of Montgomery. Herbert, abbot of that house, procured the consent of the diocesan, the Bishop of Bangor, for the Bisphoric of St. Asaph's, in which Guthurn is situated, was only restored in 1143, and caused the translation to be performed with great solemnity, as is related by Robert, then prior of that house, probably the same who was made Bishop of Bangor in 1210, who mentions some miraculous cures performed on that occasion, to which he was eyewitness. The shrine of this saint was plundered at the dissolution of monasteries. Several miracles were wrought through the intercession of this saint at Guthur and Shrewsbury, and especially Holywell. To instance some examples. Sir Roger Bodenham, knight of the bath, after he was abandoned by the ablest physicians and the most famous colleges of that faculty, was cured of a terrible leprosy by bathing in this miraculous fountain in 1606, upon which he became himself a Catholic and gave an ample certificate of his wonderful cure signed by many others. Mrs. Jane Wakeman of Sussex in 1630 brought to the last extremity by a terrible ulcerated breast was perfectly healed in one night by bathing thrice in that well, as she and her husband attested. A poor widow of Kidderminster in Worcestershire had been long lame and bedridden, when she sent a single penny to Holywell to be given to the first poor body the person should meet with there, and at the very time it was given at Holywell, the patient arose in perfect health at Kidderminster. This fact was examined and judicially attested by Mr. James Bridges, who was afterwards Sheriff of Worcester in 1651. Mrs. Mary Newman had been reduced to a skeleton and to such a disrepute state and lameness that for eighteen years she had not been able to point or set her foot on the ground. She tried all helps in England, France and Portugal, but in vain. At last she was perfectly cured in the very well, whilst she was bathing herself the fifth time. Roger Weefstone, a Quaker near Broomsgrove, by bathing at Hollywell, was cured of an inveterate lameness and palsy, by which he was converted to the Catholic faith. Innumerable such instances might be collected. Cardinal Baronius expresses his astonishment at the wonderful cures which the pious bishop of St. Asaph's, the Pope's vicegerent of the episcopal functions at Rome, related to him as an eyewitness. See St. Venefrida's Life, written by Robert, prior of Shrewsbury, translated into English, with frequent abridgments and some few additions from other authors, but not without some mistakes. First by F. Alfred, whose true name was Griffith, afterwards by J. F., both Jesuits, and printed in 1635. And again with some alterations and additional late miracles by F. Metcalf, S. J., in 1712. The Judith, in his catalogue of Welsh manuscripts, mentions two lives of St. Venefrida in that language, one in the hands of Humphrey, then Bishop of Hereford, the other in the College of Jesus, Oxford.